welcome to the MBS Show Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. Tell me, what's love got to do? Got to do with it. Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. No more. That's another good song to use, yes, but I, I'm starting to worry about you, Norman, if you don't know the classics. Uh, I've been born in a time where music is only like Beethoven's thing. But anywho, also joining us is Cuddle Socks. Mother! Oh! Cuddle Socks, he's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Cuddle Socks. I will murder you all. Uh, inside joke and inside reference. Awesome. <laughs> uh, but seriously, we got Sapphire Heart song. Hi. Cuddle Socks. Well, now you got a salty song. <laughs> uh, salty song. Oh, Sapphire <laughs> salty song. Oh, the cute little salty song. I get you some pepper. <laughs> We just eat you right up. <laughs> uh, talking about other things like that, like, yeah, we're having a discussion episode this week. And like we mentioned before, we are going to do, well, we're going to discuss about the Crystal Empire Part 2, more specifically, Princess Cadence. So since this episode is coming out on February 14, which is Valentine's Day, what better way to celebrate or hate it by talking about Princess Cadence? <laughs> so yeah Cadence What can we say about Cadence <laughs> I had to make her interesting In drawing form Because I know that the real Cadence Would never be the staring And bold <laughs> Staring and bold Adrenaline junkie Huzzah Huzzah <laughs> So before we officially Jump right in We, we need to set up a few things like this is the crystal empire so what's synonymous with the crystal empire besides cool weather changeling and flurry heart cadence obviously crystals that too stairs <laughs> that too and also cadence disappointment oh, that too <laughs> I mean let's be honest is there any episode that's been set in the crystal empire that didn't have fans going ah yeah, true. That. Equestria games come out. Ah. True that. Uh, games, ponies play. Ah. The crystalline. <laughs> ah. Ah. Yep. ah. But hey, we got Cadence. So, yeah. Ah. So I'm going to read through the, whatchamacallit, this, uh, wiki oh, up, call this? the wiki up page and read from the line. Princess Cadence is an Alarcon who is first featured in the season 2 finale alongside her husband, Shining Armor. Another disappointment. Her debut episode gives her proper title as Princess Miyamore Cadenza. She is Flurry Heart's mother, Twilight Sparkle's sister-in-law after marrying Shining Armor, and former full sitter, Princess Celestia Adopted's niece and co-ruler of the Crystal Empire alongside Shining Armor. She is also stated to be a very distant relative to Princess Amore, the former unicorn ruler of the Crystal Empire. Which, funny story from uh, from PonyCon. Mm -hmm. I have a print of Princess Amore that I drew. Ooh. And one person said, oh, that this little, little girl, she's walking by and she sees this. Daddy, that's Princess Cadence, even though it doesn't look like it. It's like, she is but a child. Stay thy nerdiness. <laughs> All right. And then another person just couldn't, this young lady just couldn't accept the idea of a unicorn princess. At which point I said, but what about uh, Princess Platinum? And you could see the explosion going off behind her eyes as I blew her mind. <laughs> oh, boy. How did you even do that? Why, why, why would you? Well, it's because it's simple fact. There was a Princess Platinum. Mm -hmm. She was quite stated to be a unicorn. Therefore, why can't a unicorn be in char be a princess? True that. In fact, that's probably the first thing that Cadence did that got people kind of riled. <laughs> Here was a new alicorn. What? Yep, and the only <laughs> other reason for that, to be honest, is because, well... Originally, Lauren Faust wanted two alicorns in the show, Celestia and Luna, but Hasbro didn't seem to agree with the statement because of the toy sale for Celestia. People were not 
buying Celestia because, well, she's inaccurate in her color scheme. Pink. Yes, that's too true. true <laughs> she's yeah. pink. Yeah, she's, she's just flipping pink. Well, in a marketing standpoint where you're selling to little girls, a pink pony princess would sell, but not in MLP FIM. Nah. Our fandom is nitpicky to heck. We want accuracy to the T. I'm the product of the 80s. Do you know how inaccurate our toys were compared to the TV shows? Yeah, I know. Like Optimus Prime, that first version of Optimus Prime. He was so static like a brick. <laughs> Dude was a brick, but even more so like the Ninja Turtles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or let's see here. What was... Oh god, Dino Riders, oh, Jason yeah. and the Real Warriors. Well yeah, there are all manner of toys that said, Oh, it's just like the show. That's not the show, that's a lump of really ugly plastic. Okay, you haven't seen bad until you've seen really really weird Pokemon uh bootleg figures that don't even have the right coloring sometimes. But that's bootleg. We're not talking about bootlegs. Bootlegs are not a dimension to themselves. Yeah, at least you guys can say uh you guys can say, oh, at least it's not official merchandise. Our official merchandise looked like bootlegs. <laughs> yeah, no comment on that one. <laughs> anyway, but that's that's the past. Mm-hmm. But Princess Cadence, they basically wanted to reuse the Celestia mold to make a new toy. And thus she was promoted to Alicorn status. Which was just a preview of things to come as... Let's see here. We've had six seasons, and if you count Luna's return, mm-hmm. then four of those seasons are the introduction of a new Alicorn princess. Only seasons four and five really scrape by without anything new. In terms of princesses? Yes. Season four was more about, ooh, Twilight's an Alicorn now. We will maybe talk about this, but not really. And uh season five was Starlight Glimmer. She's as powerful as a princess. That counts, right? 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 <laughs> no. Just wait. If she becomes an alicorn, I promise you a fandom meltdown. <laughs> well, I call foul because if she gets to be an alicorn, Sunset Shimmer gets to be an alicorn too. That's the Sunset Shimmer or Starlight Glimmer. I think that uh, there are certain other ponies who've done some amazing things. Sunset Shimmer. You reform a Draconicus and you're not given a princess of Ref- Reformation? Come on. Uh, no. Come on. No. But basically, Cadence was the start of a more marketing theme to the Alicornness, in my eyes. Yep. And because of this agreement between Lauren and Hasbro, uh, she left the show and handed off to the capable hands of the people in charge now. Which I do say they did a really good job. I'm not going to lay that at Cadence's hooves. I mean, I think Lauren left for more than just one reason. Well, that's one of the reasons. Yes, a very important reason, but in Cadence for Lauren's departure. I mean, I'm one of her, I'm one of the more vocal critics, but there's got to be a limit. Not true, that too. I'm just voicing what people are thinking. But no, um, besides that, like Cadence, all right, uh, let's just, Take a step back and look at Cadence as a character. She's a character? <laughs> yes, she is a character. <laughs> so, uh. previously we had an episode called What's a Mary Sue? And by a definition, there is a few things that comes to mind. And Cadence might be one of those things. Well, this might shock people, but I don't consider Cadence to be a Mary Sue. At least as the internet has classically defined it. Ah, and why is that? I'm waiting for the shock to wear off. <laughs> Cadence is kept kind of safely neutral. I call it generically nice. Your average Mary Sue is so independently capable, so well-versed in everything. There's never a moment of weakness because uh, the character just knows what to do in every situation. Now, Cadence... One very arguable flaw she possesses is that she's very passive and reliant on others to fix the problem for her. How many times has she just sort of asked everyone around her, well, what do you think I should do? Or does anyone know how to do this? And usually folks snap too, but then when things go wrong, that person takes the blame rather than Cadence, who didn't really 
step up as a leader. I think Cadence is kept justified enough to know that she's a good, nice person, but then left just ambiguous enough that people are able to project their own ideas onto her. And as a result, she becomes sort of a vessel for fandom ideas. Because look around, and there are some beautiful artworks of her and Shining Armor just snuggling. Mm-hmm. No socks involved, so I don't know if Safi will be as in- interested. Yeah, true sure that. Oh, shut up. <laughs> yeah, I've seen socks. her in a leather jacket with a motorcycle behind her back. Yeah. That's the type of art I like. <laughs> yeah, but still, um, I'm double checking our previous um, discussion show about the Mary Sue, and I remember reading one comment that a commenter wrote. Um, Lewis, uh, he wrote that I would define a Mary Sue not as a character in a story, but a story subjugated to a character who feels sadly in trying to have death independent of his own merits or his defects since his achievement and evolution are guaranteed, not deserved. So there's one statement there that I find enlightening or revealing. It's a good one, but the thing is I have not felt that Cadence has evolved as she's taken on new challenges. She got married and they lived happily ever after. Oh, wait, no, we've got another season. She's now ruler of a new empire that's been displaced in time. But thing we learned things are so easy going that she's actually kind of bored and losing her her wings that she's not as great a flyer. But then she goes back to being happily ever after. And they have a kid and the kid nearly kills everybody. But that gets solved, the magic is tamped down, and so they can live happily ever after. We keep reverting back to happily ever after, and I never feel like she has a new challenge to really face. But at the same time too, when it comes to characters like Cadence, how could you or how would you evolve her? Like, how would you change her or make her better? Oh, I've actually, the comics have actually opened that door. Back in the Siege of the Crystal Empire, there is a scene where Cadence is chasing Radiant Hope, trying to stop her from alerting King Sombra. And I always feel so silly summarizing events because I'm using the weirdest names. (laughs) But Cadence uses dark magic for the first time. And to her great shock, she is not, she isn't suffering uh, the headaches or the, or the disorientation that uh, Twilight suffers. Because as, as Radiant Hope mentions, you have to have true rage in your heart to use that without any ill effects. And Cadence has this thousand mile stare, like, I have rage? And I thought to myself, like, yeah, why wouldn't she? I mean, how she became an alicorn involved her entire adopted home nearly being destroyed. Her marriage featured her being kidnapped and imprisoned, possibly for several days. The birth of her daughter, though that was later, nearly wiped out her own empire. Every big event in her life has been some sort of catastrophe. It's kind of refreshing that maybe on some level that bothers her. And I think if there was a way to draw out that anger, to have her have to wrestle with the fact that for someone who's supposedly leading the perfect fairy tale life, maybe there's something to challenge that. I think ideals, and many people do list cadence as an ideal, ideals have the most meaning when they're challenged. And unfortunately, I have not yet seen Cadence really be challenged. Hmm. True that. Mm. People might say, "Oh well, she's. So, what about when she had to stay awake and lose her, uh, lose all her health trying to protect the Crystal Empire? That is a physical challenge. But she's never been challenged as a character. And any examples of challenging or uh, being challenged as a character? Well, let's see here. There was Twilight. Uh, her challenge with not showing off against the Ursa Minor, Rainbow Dash and Rainbow Falls being challenged to have her loyalty tested between uh, something of a hick town versus the professional athleticism of Cloudsdale. Fluttershy's challenge as a character, does she continue to support Discord even as he's frozen Sweet Apple Acres? Rarity's challenge could be Rarity Takes Manhattan, where she has to wonder who she is, how much she wants to compete. Pinky Pride, 
I think I've said enough. Spike in Dragon Quest, wanting to know who he really is and who does he really want to be. Go with the group or stand up for what he believes is right. Hmm. All right. So those are examples of challenging a character. Each of them possessed a physical challenge, but physical challenges can be overcome with, you know, exercise and practice. A challenge of an emotion or a challenge of your character is something that usually pushes you at a fundamental level. And I think some of those examples are usually in the key episode where a character's um, alignment or what you might call this uh, generosity or whatever they call is being challenged. For, like you mentioned, Applejack, she doesn't tell no lie. But she's in a situation where, oh, um, I ain't telling lie. If it works, it works, right? But nah, she told the truth with uh, Flame and Flam. And with the Breezies and Fluttershy, she had to shoot them away and kind of stood her ground. So that's that too. And so on. Exactly. So, and... You feel for them in those moments. When Fluttershy breaks down crying or when Applejack, in an opposite of uh, where the apple lies, she's not the liar revealed, but she is coming clean with everyone. And you you feel that humility. One of the things that drove me a little bonkers with Cadence was Games Pony's play, where she's away at the spa this entire time. In my eyes, has done a terrible job planning for this. <laughs> And yet everyone is throwing themselves down saying it's all our fault. We messed up. It's like, you know what? No. Respond superior. The boss has to take responsibility. Cadence should have taken responsibility, but she did not. And I thought, oh, come on. That would have been a great moment for her to stand up and show some humility in saying, I'm sorry. This is my effort, but I hope you will consider the Crystal Empire. But all she really did was show up, look pretty in a, in a dress. And, well, that's Cadence as in terms of, well, not being challenged. But what about the other things that's, well, easily manageable in terms of, well, her character, in terms of storytelling and whatnot? Because I do remember that we all agreed and we all highly enjoyed the Shining Armor and uh, Cadence comic book arc. What was it called? Uh, Love something, was it? Nay anything. Yeah, nay anything. I remember that we highly enjoyed that one. We did, but I think Shining Armor carried a good deal of that. Cadence was much more even keel, though. We we sort of realized that Cadence was perfectly willing. If if push came to shove, she would steamroll another mayor for Shining Armor's affections. Hmm, yeah, yeah, that's a bad example then. <laughs> that comic was highlighting Shining Armor more than Cadence, so yeah. Shining Armor was more quirky. Hmm. I think in that comic, it, it highlighted a lot of Cadence's practicality, but it, it Shining Armor really stole the show. Yeah, literally. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love pretty pink unicorns. <laughs> they make me feel so good. <laughs> yep. Uh-huh. But anyway, so uh, may- maybe another example that you mentioned before was the Umbra takeover arc. Well, she had two big moments there in my eyes. Mm -hmm. Moment number one was, what's that sound? I better hide. (laughs) The Defender of the Crystal Empire, everybody. (laughs) Yay. But she was a lot smarter uh, when she did with Radiant Hope, where she actually walked with her and showed some courage going into the den of the the Umbrum Mm. to sort of not just to show the truth to Radiant Hope. That's probably one of her best moments in this franchise. But at the same time, too, in all honesty, the Sombra arc was not enough to really highlight to us fans that, hey, Cadence is awesome. You should like her. Buy all our places and toys. Oh, well, actually, if, if we're gonna, if you're gonna invoke those words, that sums up pretty much the whole of part one of a Cantalot wedding and probably part two. That was fun in terms of a battle, but it didn't really highlight how Cadence was, you know, awesome. Besides the, oh, I love you, hubby. Now let's do our fusion dance. Fusion! Ah! But here's the thing. Part one was always was trying so hard to say, Cadence is awesome. So awesome that when Twilight goofs and goofs badly, I don't blame her friends for being angry and needing some space. 
But the fact that they went ahead with the wedding after Twilight had been disavowed, if you're so upset you don't come to this wedding, what kind of friends go to the their best friend's brother's wedding without her? Yeah. <laughs> and that was what killed Candlelight Wedding Part 1 and a little bit of Part 2. The Changeling Invasion and singing This Day Aria did bring me back. But I thought, you're basically saying that Twilight's best friends would gladly sell her out for a place at a royal wedding. So friendship is magic until someone cooler comes along? <laughs> I, I don't think that's true, too, because the main five mostly were there because, well, I do remember that each of them had a role from Rarity build, doing the dress to Applejack catering to Pinkie Pie party planning, Rainbow Dash doing the Sonic Ring Boom, and... Uh, Fluttershy to entertainment with the animals. I think that's how it goes. Well, that was their roles. Then they became bridesmaids, and then they wouldn't give that up. And honestly, even then, you got to make a choice. You got to stand with your friend and offer some support, or you take, or you go with the popular princess. And I genuinely dislike that the core of this show, Friendship is Magic, was broken just to introduce this new character. Right now, at the time we're recording this, the Chaos Theory arc just ended oh, yeah. with uh, Accord. And Starlight Glimmer is once again being hotly contested, much like to wear him back again, because the rest of the cast is sort of brought low to make her look good. Well, to make us really think Cadence is awesome... They broke apart the main six friendship for a brief period, all for the promise of a popularity. But in all honesty, the way that they did this one, um, the Accord saga was pretty ingenious and pretty believable. Because, well, the way... Okay, that's another story for another day, but... Another uh, story, yes. Yeah, I'll just sum it up that I do like how they did the whole story. At first glance, like I need to reread it to properly review it. But from what I can tell, I really like what they did with how putting Starlight Glimmer as the, well, star. Because she understands. Better than Celestia. That's a different story. Once, that's another review. That's another review. Soon, soon, soon. That's another review. But, but here's, here's the thing. He, I think they've taken too many shortcuts with making Cadence look good. That basically, to make Cadence look good, everyone else has to look bad. It's like uh, Princess Spike, where she's glaring down at him for most of the episode. The implication being, well, Cadence could do this better. He's just messing up. Okay, but we never get to see Cadence do better. It's not enough just to say, this character's bad at it. You need to show Cadence being good at it. Yeah. And up And right now, I can't point to where Cadence has really stepped up as a leader. Other than being thrown by her husband. <laughs> that was hilarious. That's probably their most defining thing. She did capitalize on the moments. You know, she's good at making a big showing and existing in the moment. But that only happens once a crisis. What do you do on the day-to-day -day stuff? Smile and wave, boys. Smile and wave. Yeah, I know. Oh, I, that the... <laughs> and I think this is the major problem with the background characters that's not really defined because we have Celestia and we have Luna. Their characteristics were kind of defined by their traits. For example, we didn't really have a lot of Celestia episodes, but we already know her backstories, her struggles, uh, trials and tribulations. With Luna, She's struggling to get back to the modern society. And if you follow Katie Cook's logic of how Celestia should be, I enjoy that one. Uh, funny Celestia is fun. Sorry, funny Luna is fun. Well, they're, they're all, they're both fun. Here's the other thing. When you talk about Celestia, if you took her away her princess title, if she was made a commoner, mm -hmm. You'd still have a character, right? Oh, yeah, totally. Like, you still have... Okay, let's just say that if you pull her out of her kingdom, throw her away like what they did with Princess Bubblegum, she will be a motherly figure where ponies will go to her for advice and a big warm hug and probably she'll cook you some nice um biscuits and what, whatnot. And Luna would still have a character as very excitable but also trying to be very 
traditional in my eyes. If you take away the princess title from Cadence, I'm not sure what she'd be like. You remember way back when, when we reviewed um, Trees of Crowd? Yeah. Nope. You were not there, Seppi. That was a really old one. Exactly. But anywho, way back when, when we reviewed that one, you mentioned, and I still think that you still mentioned this, that Cadence is an adrenaline junkie. Like, she strives on adrenaline. So, if you take away her princess title, I think she'll be the adventurous type. I think she'll be hanging around with Rainbow Dash most of the time, doing stunts, doing stuff, just doing things. As much as I love my adrenaline junkie idea because it's just something silly and fun, I haven't really seen that adrenaline junkie in the show. I mostly just sort of invented it. And that's the thing. Cadence offers fans a very real opportunity to envision, to sort of come up with ideas for this princess. And some people, they draw like her just being love, lovey-dovey with her husband, mm-hmm. you know, shipping the the classic ideal of you know happily ever after. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Others like me try to envision something that's count, counter to a uh, princess, you know, the traditional princess. And Cadence can be both those things at once. But I can't praise a character for being so open ended to interpretation that you can basically rewrite her character any way you please. <laughs> I can celebrate the fandom for their creative ideas around this character. That and some people just like Cadence because they like Cadence. If you take a look at that Steven Universe (laughs) picture I uh, posted down below, the conversation in between the two characters that aren't Steven are basically like, um, who would be a better ruler, Celestia or Mm. Luna, or at least in analytical arguments over each character. Yeah. <laughs> then there's Steven who's all, I like Cadence! And you know what? If you like Cadence, just to like her, that's okay too. Yeah. But exactly character wise, right. there's not much to go off of. If you like a character, if, if you see something you enjoy in the idea, certainly not trying to tamp down people's enjoyment, but there are times where people just insist you have to like it, that their enjoyment is fact. When we're doing this, not because we want to change your mind on the matter or not, it's just we want to have a discussion on cadence because cadence is, well, what is cadence? Well, Cadence yeah. is a pretty pink alicorn who was made for the sake of merchandising, but is pretty enough to where a lot of girls want to be like her, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Well, there is actually something to be said for her role as one of the four, five now princesses. You've got a princess who's basically the queen. They gave her the princess title, but she's the queen. Mm -hmm. You've got one who is so counter, counter expectation to being a princess. You know, citizens of Ponyville! (laughs) You've got Twilight who is the new princess who theoretically should still be learning stuff. I feel like the show is going to drop the ball on that one. <laughs> but uh, uh is there room in this array to just say, here's the traditional fairy tale princess, which can still appeal to young women? Hmm. And I think the answer is yes, there's room for that. Cadence can fill that role. I'm just, I'm looking for the next step where you show why the fairy tale princess has a role. And honestly, I think that role is to inspire the best in others. Mm-hmm. She did that a little bit in uh, the Crystal Empire where she swooped in, got everyone to charge up the heart. But I'm looking for her to probably redeem someone or reach out to a lost soul and maybe remind them of their better selves. And I feel like that hasn't happened. Yeah. Honestly, I'd kind of like to see that too because a lot of media nowadays like denounces the normal fairy tale princess. Like if you look at um modern shows and media, like when it comes to like showing off the fairy tale princess, they normally go out to the uh stereotypical route and denounce that stereotype. Mm-hmm. Or even try to convince somebody who is portraying the stereotype of a fairy tale princess to not be that. And to be something else. Yeah, I do understand that. And we're getting a lot of that from Disney now with Moana and 
which we call this. Uh, well, it started with Frozen. Yeah, but not not really Frozen. It was, uh, Tangled like that before then. You go further back. Well, Tangled. Well, Tangled was that one too. Although I did love Frozen's uh, the fairy tale. Prince and Princess didn't quite work out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Although, yeah, yeah. Although you it's can't funny. can't marry somebody you just met. <laughs> but I do find it funny. Uh, Moana used Princess as an insult. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, she got all mad when she was called a princess. And yet Moana represents the healthiest form of the princess archetype. Maybe this is also why I don't really care for how Cadence is presented. She's often shown standing next to Luna and Celestia as if she knows all she needs to know to be one of the big rulers. Her her legend is just unfolding, whereas Celestia and Luna's may be passing. Mm-hmm. Now, the princess archetype is all about growth. It's about being curious. It's about going out and exploring, lear- learning new things. The chief challenge is that having been raised in luxury, the princess has to confront her own mindset and expectations and adapt to them. Kind of like Princess Jasmine when she gave that apple to the kid and nearly got her arm lopped off. (laughs) Mm -hmm. That was her acting on the rules of an old world. She didn't understand the, the one she was in. I haven't really seen curiosity. I haven't seen a willingness to learn new things. She's sort of content with where she is. And it's that stagnation that bothers me. Okay, let's put it back to why are we not getting a lot of cadence now? Because we have what, like seven seasons now where cadence only appeared, like I can count them, like just only appeared on screen and talking is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16 episodes where she appears only in 16 talking episodes and she didn't really do much. Like, why is that? Could it be that Hasbro is kind of blocking her, not pushing her out? I think that there, that we're, we're looking at two different things. There's the archetype of the princess, which is really meant to represent young women. You know how they say every everyone wants to be a princess mm. or every little girl wants to be a princess? The truth is every princess is supposed to represent little girls. And that's why people often cry foul if they're shown as inept, passive, or unreliable. But Hasbro is viewing this as a marketing piece, trying to couple with the financial juggernaut that is the Disney princess line. And to make that appealing, I think making princesshood look like hard work is very unappealing to the marketing pitch. You want to drum up the glamour rather than the growth. I do understand what you're saying, but with the show, like with MLP specifically, it's shown in a way that it's breaking all norms. Norms in storytelling, norms in how people like the show and whatnot. It's like breaking every rule they have. So why not just hop on that train and, you know what, let's do a, a episode involving Cadence wanting to go to the Griffin Empire. Let's do that. I would not object to that because they would show her determination. But I, I challenge you on the idea that this is breaking all rules. There are some things that MLP chooses to stick with tried and true. Case in point, the princesses are often in need of rescue. I'm waiting for the day they're locked in a tower. Mm-hmm. Oh, in fact, uh, there's a book, Good Night Baby Flurry Heart, oh. where in trying to craft a story to get Flurry Heart to go to bed, eventually the princess is locked in a tower by an evil ogre of some sort, and it's up to the handsome knight to save her. They went pure traditional on that. This is a story uh, that the parents make up for the kids, or is this... It's it's a story that Cadence and Shining Armor work together uh, to create for Flurry Heart. All right, all right, all right. The show usually twists it that it be Shining Armor locked in the tower. <laughs> but that did not come to be. Every now and again, the traditional v- views see- do get represented. Yeah, but still, I, I don't know why that has bro- it's, see, here's Here's my view on how the script writing goes. 
scriptwriters have an idea, they pitch it to Hasbro, Hasbro says yes, work on it, or no, scrap it. A good example of not being the norm is uh, the 100th episode where Hasbro tells writers, guys, we want you to do an episode featuring the background ponies. All of them. And writer says, you know that's not going to work, right? We don't care. Make it work. And get me pictures of Spider-Man. Ah, I need ponies. Pictures of ponies. So I don't know. I don't know if that's quite how the conversation went, however. Well, I talked to Larson about it. It's kind of a abridged version of said thing. <laughs> ah, so they, so they really commissioned make make an episode featuring all the all the background characters. Yes. Huh. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> yes. Uh, Hasbro wanted it. Larson said it was a bad idea, but you know what? I make it work. <laughs> and he did. So, in truth, I think, I think that in this was one case where the, uh, network might have been more right than he. Mm, true, but. It was fun. That, it was fun. True, the episode was fun. But at the same time, too, when it comes to Cadence, why don't they want to jump on that idea and make her work? I think because they're trying to emulate the the uh, Disney princess line, mm. and l- let's ask for all the songs about love and and happiness and fi- love will find a way. Have you ever seen the Disney princesses really roll up their sleeves? There's a few. Um, there's this one hybrid movie. Um, it's uh, I forgot the title, but it shows. It starts off as. Enchanted, I think that movie was called. Ah. Typical Disney princess then teleported to the real world, our world. And then she, well, kind of became real. Like, oh, I, I, I'm not stuck to the norm of being, uh, the damsel in distress. I can do my own decisions. I can save the prince. Wow. This is cool. Let me do it. That's a, that's a good example, but I have to ask. How much has that been marketed since? Ugh. I don't know if that princess is part of the Disney princess line. Uh, technically, she is a Disney princess, but because of... I don't know. Uh... She's not a traditional Disney princess. It was made to make fun of them, so it didn't count. Yeah, true that. I mean, take take the heroine from Brave. Mm-hmm. When they added her to the Disney line... Folks were outraged at how they'd straightened out her hair, made her more demure. Now she is wearing pretty dresses. In a way... Because in the movie, she was trying to avoid that altogether, and they basically blotched up the story. Exactly. In favor of the marketing. And that's the the trouble, I think. The marketing overrides the characters. And so even if you can point to the positive traits... Cadence is very heavily marketable as the fairy tale ideal, and so they don't put a lot of emphasis on what her character can do. Uh, in terms of marketing, yes, but when it comes to the story, because here's the thing, I, I, I'm feeling, or what I'm noticing is that Pony Toys, they're selling, but they're not selling the things that they think we want. What's selling right now, if you go to any Toys R Us, Target, whatever you go to, Walmart probably, you can see that they're not focusing on Cadence at all. They're more focusing on Twilight's Castle. They're more focusing on the, uh, what you call this, Equestria Girls Minis. They're focusing on others besides Cadence. So Cadence right now is in a spot where marketing wants Pink Pony Princess, but consumers don't want Pink Pony Princess. They want show accurate toys. That's why they have the fan favorites line where you get that awesome looking figure of Celestia, Luna, Discord, and Chrysalis. That's what we want and that's what we're buying. Even with the licensing from Wheel of Fine and Funko and yeah, we're, we're gobbling all that up. True, but it is funny that while Shining Armor is part of the Guardians of Harmony line, Cadence is not yet. Then again, Rarity and Fluttershy have yet to truly be announced. Mm-hmm. Unless you get, unless you bought like the limited edition Fluttershy Discord 2 pack. Ah, uh, yeah, that one. But still. I think the last big toy pitch was Cadence and Baby Flurry Heart as part of the Crystal Castle playset. And then just, just to really rub it in, 
Then they released a special pack where, oh, yeah, Shining Armor lives here, too. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, it's, it's kind of funny. It's like, where, wait, you, you forgot her hubby? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not... I'm not really buying that Shining Armor is the co-ruler of the Crystal Empire at this point. Yeah. Only the comics have ever shown him be in charge. Yeah. No. Uh, I'm just trying to remember when Tarek attacked the ponies. He was taking care of Cantalot Castle? Yeah, so he, he was... can't even be in his own kingdom in order to rule it. Well, technically not really because Cadence was at Cantalot Castle, but still... He's still the the royal guard. Really, I thought. In my eyes, at least, oh. he's still wearing the uniform. He's still he's still presenting himself as such. I'm waiting for him to really have to. Well, kind of like Cadence, I'd like to see him wrestle with this new role, this new empire that he is to rule alongside his princess, and he's just not stepping up. And she's there's no question they're beloved. If you read uh, Twilight Sparkle and the Crystal Heart Spell, mm-hmm. Cadence's sole role in that is to give her a tour of the Empire where everyone comes up and says how much they like her. Mm-hmm. But no one says her, to her, uh, Princess Cadence, can you help us settle this dispute? Can you answer this question? It's like, that's what I'd love to see more for her. Let her do show her best to show that she's a competent ruler, not that she's just popular. I think that's one of the things that the show needs to do and that is make Cadence a better ruler make her awesome make her just be good I, I'm not 100% sure on what you can do with Cadence right now like we don't have much info on her like we don't have much of anything like what we know is very limited and what we have in terms of information is very limited and it's very scattered. Like we're not even sure if this is true or that is true because we have show canon, which is the top tier canon, and comic canon, which is easily overwrite by the show. So with that, I'm saying that hmm, we need more shows involving cadence. Zappy, I feel like we've been sort of blocking you from the conversation. Is there anything you'd like to add in on this? Well, I'd go with like the uh, previous conversation in what you said before on, like, she doesn't have to, like, have this uh, silly quirk to her, like Cadence, but it would be nice if she were to reach out to a pony in need or something of the sort. And while, yes, we could have, like, a bit of a quirk, that would be nice, too, in order to get some character development, like, maybe take care of a pony and put her needs of being pretty and being good for the paparazzi aside in order to help somebody else. And add a bit of a quirk. Just a little bit of a quirk in order to make her feel more uh, humanized for us. I I don't think you need to have the quirk too. I mean... Well, you don't have to have the quirk, but it's a nice little touch. I, I take it back. You do need to have the quirk because when I think about Celestia, she's a prankster. Like, remember that one scene where she... Uh, tricked uh, the cakes into filling her cup of tea, or like in order to make other characters feel more comfortable. Yeah, yes, yeah. and also with Luna, she's loud, boisterous, but also caring to the little fillies. So you have that too. Twilight is well, <laughs> Twilight is Twilight. We've been with her since day one, so she's um well developed. But Cadence, we didn't really get anything out of her, and yeah, having. Her having a quirk is, I say by now, is a must. The quirk that Silver gave was, well, Fanon rather than Canon. Yeah. We need Gabby Gums to come out of the uh, woodwork. That way she can uh, give Celestia a bit of... um. Cake-ting? We need a moment like that. <laughs> well, let's see here. The chat is, oh yes, Celestia eating cake. Let her eat cake. Yeah. Princess being just a little, not... Not slothful, but just a little undignified. Yeah. We need character quirks like Celestia like Hicks and like to troll people. Luna likes to shout really loudly and play video games. Well, she doesn't <laughs> like to shout really loudly. That was, um... Traditional uh, a lot voice. Old, yeah. old tradition, yeah. Yeah. But I, I don't think that's applicable now. But still, she likes the video games. She plays Overwatch. <laughs> 
That's fanon, not canon. You can't see anything wrong. I think that's canon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I would, when we I, say video games in Equest, oh wait, we did see video <laughs> games in Equestria. Never mind. Yeah, but they were old arcade games, though. Not and that old. Into anything. Not that old. <laughs> Just thinking, I use. I grew up at a time of arcades and those machines, those glorious, glorious machines. Oh, yeah, those were awesome. Uh let's see. But Silver, did you grow up on Pong? Oh, we ponged until the break of dawn. <laughs> Why does that sound dirtier than intended? <laughs> what, you mean slapping a ball back and forth between two paddles? Do you know, did you know the safe word back then? Game over? High score, high score. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Men. <laughs> but, uh, with, with Cadence, I, I agree we need to see just something that's not expected of a princess. She is very much a representative of the fairy tale ideal. And that's not a bad thing. It, there is value in those romantic ideals, but I think they have to have an impact on others besides just everyone's happy, no challenge. Because it, it's fun to see things challenged. It's fun to see characters overcome. And here's the funny thing. This is one aspect of Cadence we haven't really talked about. There's this nebula of expanded universe material. We mentioned Nay Anything. There's Cadence and the, um, oh, what's the book title? Mm. Read this just recently. The, the Crystal Heart Festival of some sort. Mm -hmm. uh, there's little things for Cadence outside of the show. And people often rely on that because it's, it's gives more attention to her. There's two problems with that. One is the, the continuity issue how much of this is real until the show contradicts it. Mm -hmm. Or if I have to read all these other books just to enjoy Cadence in the show, that feels more like a homework assignment than genuine enjoyment. And and that's why I mentioned, because the comics, the books, those are just your two canons. Like if the show says, nah, they ain't canon, this is the canon. Like you can throw all those things away. And we'll be just like, what? That? Then what's the point of reading or buying comics? What? The point is that they're fun. Sometimes a fun story is just a fun story. It doesn't matter if it's canon. Mm. Hello, Star Wars universe. <laughs> uh, yes. But still, um, I think we're glossing something or we're trying to avoid one, one aspect of cadence that we're not talking about. Like, I, I'm feeling that we're really, really avoiding it. Well, not purposely anyway. And that is her voodoo magic love spell. Oh, oh goodness. Yeah. Oh goodness. We're, we're, that's, again. that's Cadence's sign of, you don't like me, well I'll make you like me. <laughs> oh my. Wow. <laughs> if I cannot be loved, I will be feared. But I can't be loved because I'll make you love me. <laughs> now, you know, it's, Indeed. it's funny. Starlight caught such flack for brainwashing the main six. The, Cadence, I get that it, it sounds romantic at first. A princess who spreads loves wherever she goes. Good lord, does that not sound fairy tale? <laughs> oh yeah. My problem is that it's a shortcut. It's that she's not encouraging others to work through their problems. She's just zapping them and calling it good. Well, I, I think with Cadence, overall, we don't see her use her power more in depth or more explained. Because in that scene that you um, reference in where two ponies are fighting and they're talking about, well, the male pony says that, oh, baby, you have too many hofer cures. You should stop. I'm going bankrupt. And the girlfriend says, no, all my girlfriends are doing it. I do whatever I want. I think she also mentions you never like my friends. No, she didn't say that. Like, all my friends are doing the hofer cure thing and I want to do it too. Well, so there's there's social issues, there's financial issues. None of this is really addressed because all they say is you did that thing, mm -hmm. which my mind, being somewhat perverse, goes to all the wrong places. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, but still, even even with that too, uh, I'm not hundred percent sure like what Cadence thinks is because we don't see her using her power to say, "Ha, huh, I'll make you." Rekindle the love. It could be, could it be that? Like, oh, I'm rekindling your love for one another. Huzzah. 
that that's a actually wait, Safi, would you like to weigh in on this? All I can say is that the girl's in the wrong. That's all that needs to be said. <laughs> Which cadence or the the female pony? Female pony. Any reason? Oh, okay. I mean, really, you're spending all that money on friggin' hoof cures when you could be, oh, I don't know, using food or something other than getting a friggin' hoof cure every other day? I mean, really? I mean, if you're going to do it every other day, then use use your own damn money. <laughs> all right. That you know, is all. You know, they say that uh, that finances are one of the key reasons relationships don't end well. Yeah, true that. I don't know, it frustrates me being in a world where I only spend my money on food. Norman, to go back to your point that she might just be rekindling the love that's there, Mm -hmm. a lot of people have brought up that, especially when the lady says something like, you did that thing, that Cadence might be stirring up positive memories. Mm -hmm. And that's certainly, it sounds good at first, but my issue is that it doesn't address the problems the couple is having. It just sort of distracts. And it's a shortcut to a solution that doesn't really fix their problem. Plus, it's Cadence looking at how they're behaving, deciding that she doesn't like it, and changing it without their permission. Which, again, is one of my key issues with ideas like reform spells, friendship reconciliation spells, all that stuff. Hmm. But at the same time, too, like, as for now, what we're given... It's not enough to, well, to give a proper explanation on certain situations. Like, define my power. What is my stand? Like, she doesn't really explain it. All we know is, zap, you're in love again. That's about it. Other than, oh, what's my limitation? What can I do? Uh, what de- Define my power. Like, Starlight Glimmer here. Her power is, I'm good at magic. Like, I am a fast learner. But I make bad decisions. I like to take shortcut that can go terribly wrong. At least we know that. But with Cadence here, after we see her do the zappy zappy thing, that's the only time we see it. I like that. The zappy zappy thing. <laughs> I might borrow that. Yes, it's yours. Well, in a weird way, Starlight and Cadence share the same foil. They look for the quick solution, which may not be the most stable solution. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was it? The, the That book I keep trying to remember, Cadence and the Crystal Fair. Oh. She looks for a quick solution, and as a result, things do go worse. But the thing is, no one ever really challenges her on it. She, if anything, the uh, this character, this uh, socially awkward filly, basically has to make a mess and admit she was wrong on her own. You don't get the sense that she and Cadence really came to a mutual apology. Even though I do think Cadence does acknowledge she made a mistake. Well, acknowledging isn't the same thing as addressing it. Well, in some sense, I don't know if that mistake really came back to bite her. The little filly was more... The book... Actually, I think the low point was when the book said, yeah, this is pretty much her fault. It flat out says to the audience, yeah, she's messing up. Uh, That's not true. Well, way to... Way to kind of rob the tension there. Wouldn't it be nice if we could really have an author say, by the way, I'd just like to let you know that this party is actually more in the wrong, and so you should root for this party. Unless to you. <laughs> Convenient. Hey. Uh, oh, if only we had a historian before World War II. Hey, did you know these Nazis are actually not that nice of a <laughs> group of guys? <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, yeah. you, you, you folks really should stop apologizing for them and, you know, Prep your armies. Believe me, you'll need them. Okay, doodles. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, it could be one of those things where if Foresight was something like, hey, you know this Zack Snyder guy? Uh, I don't think he's a good director. I'm just saying. Excuse me, President Kennedy, I just, <laughs> I feel like you should really avoid this whole Bay of Pigs thing. <laughs> uh, okay, quick side story from PonyCon. <laughs> mm-hmm. Where, you know, it's funny, all the conventions I've been to, I don't know if I've met anyone who really is arguing passionately for Cadence. Really, no. At both pony conventions and anime conventions. I've seen uh, Cadence and Shining Armor cosplays. I think having the chance to cosplay as a couple, if you are a couple, Mm -hmm. is very appealing. Bonus points if it's a royal couple where you get to wear a uniform and dress. Yeah, I've seen those before and those can be really cute. And you want to know what makes oh, it yeah. awesome? 
if there's uh-huh. a third wheel. Oh, and they have chrysalis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll make it even even cooler. Yeah. And Chrysalis, she cemented herself. She is the Maleficent of MLP. <laughs> e. She got more love than the royal couple. Yeah. And I think that once she saw what uh, Torex became, she like, nope. <laughs> nope. I'm exiting stage left. Nope. They would have to make Queen Chrysalis, like, really, they'd have to make a really good design if they were to somehow reform her. <laughs> Oh no! Renegade for life. Up for it. Yep. Uh, Renegade for life. Yep. Yep. Damn right. Uh, but still, if they, if the show staff chooses to reform Chrysalis one day, mm-hmm. they better make a damn good design for reformed Chrysalis in order to make up for how awesome she looks now. Yeah, true that. But still, that's for the future. Just saying. Just for the future. But I don't know when it comes to love spells or brain control. It's hard. Yeah. Like with Cadence here, like like I mentioned, the only thing that it's hard to what you call this, just hard to expect or hard to relate to is just or hard to explain is that she only showed her power once, and once is not enough. Well, she used it again to free Shining Armor of brainwashing, uh, which is more positive. True, but I don't know. I mean, it doesn't really define her. Powers. After Cadence came to town, <laughs> Cadence just looks all suspicious. <laughs> and I, and I have always joked the cynical side of me, uh, saying there's a scene in Nay Anything where Cadence is radiating light mm-hmm. and shining armors in awe, mm-hmm. and like, wait, is she putting the zap on him? <laughs> oh, there, there's mm-hmm. one comic I remember way back when. Um, there's this two ponies. Uh, they fell into the mud because accidents and they were fighting and Cadence just walks by and oh they're fighting let me zap them and zap and when they clean up is Fleur de Lis and Shining Armor oops and then another comic where it turned out the couple they zapped were brother and sister uh, yep <laughs> oh god no oh yes I went there yep, I yep, went there yep, yep. yeah <laughs> see her power's not defined but the fandom really knows how to define it oh god in all the worst possible ways. Yep. yep. Oh, God. <laughs> yep. But anywho, uh, as, as, mu- as much as I want to talk about Cadence, I think we reach our point. Unless, uh, Silver or Safi, you got more to discuss? Nope. I'll throw this idea out there. Mm-hmm. Love means different things to different people. Especially when you're young and you're kind of envisioning, as, as a show once put it, you're in love with the idea of being in love. And on some level, I think we all connect with that, even if you've only cheered for a fictional romance in some movies. Like, I'll just throw out Han and Leia in the original Star Wars. Mm -hmm. So, in the same way, cadence can mean different things to different fans. And that interpretation comes through in their work. But like I say, I can only really celebrate the fans' perception and expression of those views. I can't really celebrate cadence based on that. All right, and well, I think right about now, where when it comes to cadence and what we expect, I, I think it's up to the show writers and fan writers to create stories about her. And I, I'm gonna put out this shout out to this one guy. Um, he's a film writer on FilmWiki, and uh, Silver, how do you say that name? Sidral Mundet. Yes, you. You do good stories. I want you to write something about Cadence. <laughs> I know you're listening to this. Oh, God. I know you're listening to this. <laughs> so write something, my friend. Uh, but anywho, uh, that's the show for this week. And, well, uh, what shall we do next week, Silver? Well, I believe we're still catching up on Season 6 as we steadily approach Season 7. Oh, yeah, Season 7. So that could be around the corner. And, you know, with the announcement of... Who's coming on in season seven? I'm excited. I just see him looking at Rainbow Dash saying, There's something, some horrible thing on your wing. Oh my god. <laughs> and then he gets a gun. Oh god. No. <laughs> but, okay. But Silver, it's a kid show. You can't have guns. No, true that. So, as a child who watched G.I. Joe growing up, I say the nay. <laughs> uh, but, if you guys could, well, Shatner's coming. So, what would you 
think his role would be? Like, dream role? Like, dream character. Go ahead. Shoot. Silver. Dream character. Oh, I've seen him in so many different roles. Funny enough, this, the, the oddest one was where he played the big giant head on Third Rock from the Sun. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. I would say that if he, if he were like an uncle or family member to one of the main six. Oh, yeah. And he comes in and just taxes all of their patients. Oh, yeah. But what lesson would they learn from him? Oh, patience. Patience of virtue. Or family, family provides support in ways you don't expect. Yeah, that too. That could too. There you go. Oh, I'm just going to say bonus points if it's Fluttershy's uncle. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Uh, Sevi? Uh, it's kind of hard. I, I mean, I've seen William Shatner in a bunch of different roles in media, mm-hmm. but I can't recall any of them, if that makes any sense. Yeah, he's everywhere, so I do understand. Like, I don't know, the, the closest thing I can remember to anything related to William Shatner in any media that I've seen is, uh, a few bad animated films and a uh, parody on the Animaniacs where uh, he was supposed to be doing karaoke. Oh, that one. Or something. <laughs> Rocket Man <laughs> burning out his fumes in space. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, as for me, I, I mentioned this before on the normal show, but I'm going to mention it here again. Um, the, the setup is he's the captain of the blimp. You know the blimp that we saw in season two that's never been used again? Ah, the one that Rarity was on? Yes, that one. So he's the captain and he's bringing um, the ponies. Uh, let's just say Rarity and Pinkie Pie. They seem to be a really good couple. Oh, Applejack. Yeah, th- those two odd couples are fun. And they're bringing them to a faraway land, probably the Griffin country or someplace very far. Zebra town, something like that. So he's the captain and they're talking to him, and he goes, I am the captain of the ship. What can I do for you? That will be cool. And then he just embraces and kisses Rarity. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, no. Yes, oh. because the captain gets all the ladies. Oh, uh, you mean Captain Kirk. <laughs> Have you ever seen William Shatner's view of uh, interpretation as seven? Oh, no. I'll link you guys because it's it's just fun. All right, okay. But anywho, um, with that, I think we wrap up our case on cadence for now until something major pops up. So yeah, uh, I hope you guys at home enjoy our little banter about cadence and thought about how we want her or how we think we, she can be better. But I do hope that you enjoy this episode. Anywho, next week we'll be doing more pony episodes. Um. Next week, we'll be reviewing Top Bolt. Uh, that is Season 6, Episode 24. Uh, written by Joanna Lewis and Christy Sunko. So, yeah. Yay! Top Bolt. Uh, the parody uh, naming convention of Top Gun. Oh, yeah. And yet, there, there is no volleyball scene I call foul. Yeah, I, I want the volleyball scene. Like, yeah, the... Like, awesome soundtrack, like, uh, Highway to the Danger Zone. There's no death, like, oh man. I'm on a highway to hell. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> so, anywho, that's next week's show, and I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Vaquil. I have been Sapphire Metal Song. <laughs> uh, really? Metal Socks. <laughs> And we'll, yeah. <laughs> and we'll guys see you next week with another awesome episode of the MBS show. See ya. Adios. Bye bye. And Cadence. Who wants to do Cadence? No, I don't want to do Cadence. That's Shining Armor's job. Well, I mean, doing a review, not do something else. What were you thinking? You know what I was thinking, because you were secretly thinking it too.